Hello, everyone, and welcome to our shoulder pain workshop. Um, I'm going to actually share my screen with you all. There we go. We'll share the screen here. Share my PowerPoint presentation. There we go. And we will share this with everybody. Play from the start. So looks pretty good okay hopefully you all can hear me and can see me that's good so once again hello everyone uh, welcome to our shoulder pain and rotator cuff workshop the main goal of the workshop today is to show you strategies to be able to manage your shoulder pain without unnecessary medications injections or surgery hopefully by the end of this workshop you have a good solid idea of what's going on with your shoulder and of course an action plan what to do about it going forward you know we actually oriented this workshop to a lot of the senior centers out there because a lot of seniors uh, just can't get out. They are still very uncomfortable with coming into um, a medical setting um, uh, or obviously for physical therapy, something that they're maybe uh, you know, willing to hold off on for you know, pain relief strategies. So it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's formats like this that allow us to actually share information to help our seniors and help those who are also looking for help um, uh, to give them options for what to do um, with their shoulder pain at home. So um, we have going forward, we pretty much are doing mainly in-person visits in the, in the clinic, probably 99%. We start, still are doing some telehealth visits. So depending on your, your comfortability factor, you could do a telehealth visit or a in-person visit. So it's entirely up to you. So a quick introduction. My name is Chris Dukarski. I'm the owner of OrthoWell Physical Therapy as well as WalkWell Foot Orthotics. Um, I've been a PT for, gosh, almost 30 years or so. Long time. Well, time flies and you're having fun. Um, and uh, for those of you that have foot orthotics out there, um, just if you can, just in the chat box, um, just maybe... Um, let me know if you do um, have foot orthotics or if um, maybe I made orthotics for you in the past. I mean, that's always a possibility. Uh, we've been here since 1997 with Walkwell Foot Orthotics. And just to give you a quickie uh, synopsis, um, uh, we make everything in-house. I, I mold stuff right to your foot. I make the orthotics in the office while you wait. Um, whole process takes about an hour um, from start to finish. Uh, the orthotics are 140 to 190. Um, that includes everything. And uh, like I said, you get them the same day. I have a whole web page where I talk about orthotics. And going forward, we're going to have um, workshops on foot pain and plantar fasciitis, as well as foot orthotics. Um, we've done in-person, um, in-house workshops before. And of course, we're now we're going to virtual um, for obvious reasons and uh, for easeability for people to actually participate. So um, hence the reason why you guys are here today. So, um, so as far as uh, the physical therapy end of things, I added... Uh, the physical therapy to uh, walk well. So walk well, we started in 97. We opened our physical therapy clinic in 08. It's been 12 years here at the Cummings Center. And we opened up our second clinic um, six years ago in Newburyport um, in 2014. So, um, but that's, uh, that's pretty much it for me as far as an intro. I want to hear from you guys. Okay. So this is all about you today. So what I want you to do is enter your first name, um, a, uh, maybe some, a quickie, uh, you know, uh, uh, description of maybe what's going on with your shoulder, the fact that you heard it, you know, in, in the past, you had surgery or you're just struggling with it the last couple of months and something, um, that hurts the most, whether it be reaching up overhead, behind your back, reaching into the back seat, throwing a baseball, whatever. Um, so just put that in the chat box right there. And as you do that, just a, a little bit of housekeeping here. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, um, uh, we're going to probably answer most questions, you know, directly from me at the QA at the end. And um, we have uh, in the back uh, here, Tasha, um, our lovely Tasha, one of our trainers here in the clinic. Um, can you say hello, Tasha? Maybe she's, maybe she's Hi, hiding. Everybody. Oh, there she is. There she is. Good. So any questions that you have, you can certainly put those into the chat box. She can answer those questions to the best of her ability, anything that she can, we will address that um, at the end. Okay, I'm gonna definitely get to all your questions by the time we're done uh, with the presentation today. So go ahead and uh, we'll, like I said, Tashi will address things as we go and then we'll um, do the rest at the end. So um, if you haven't downloaded the worksheet yet, um, you definitely, uh, we can certainly help you with that. Tasha can send you a link. Uh, the workshop pretty much mirrors what I'm gonna be doing um, with the presentation today. So will enhance your educational benefits, um, knowledge uh, when it comes to 
you know, what you get from the workshop. Um, and I think I said it pretty much mirrors what I'm going to be talking about here. So um, for those of you that make it to the end of the workshop, we have a special offer for you. Um, this presentation won't take that long. Um, so, but for those that do stick around, um, there's a special um, offer we have, something that can really help your shoulder pain, something that can help you very quickly as well. So I'm sure you'd be pretty excited about that. So stick around for that. And lastly, I want to make sure that everybody um, who's here today, um, that, you're, that you're present, um, that you're engaged in the presentation. I know uh, being at home can be very distracting at times. You're talking about 45 to 50 minutes uh, with this. So, um, so stay tuned and um, try to be as engaged as possible. Okay. So, okay. So that's our introduction here. So let's move on to the first question, of course. Um, so... Of course, that's our intro page. I probably should have had up when I was chatting with you. Um, so uh, shoulder pain within the past 30 days. Um, give me a yes uh, in the chat box there for those of you that had. Not sure if you're here um, listening for a friend or a family member or for yourself, but if you had shoulder pain, then certainly um, give me a yes so I know who's got pain and who does not. Um, so interesting, good. All right, so a couple people. Um, so let's kind of get on to some anatomy here. Let's get a, a sense of what we're dealing with uh, for uh, the shoulder. Um, so what exactly is the rotator cuff? Okay, the rotator cuff is a group of four muscles that attach to your shoulder blade and the arm. Okay, um, the, the purpose of the rotator cuff is to hold the head of the humerus in the shoulder joint itself, okay, against the glenoid fossa. Okay, so uh, the head of the humerus or the, um, the shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint. Okay, so the ball sits in the socket here, and if the rota rotator cuff isn't functioning properly, that head of the humerus could slop back and forth or up and down in the shoulder joint. Okay, so its purpose is to keep it centered as you raise your arm up and down, to keep it centered in the shoulder joint. Okay, um, the shoulder joint itself is the most mobile structure in your body, so it's very susceptible to injuries, and um, it's, it's stability that's, that's really uh, really necessary when it comes to everything working properly in the shoulder. Um, and that's a huge thing we address in physical therapy is how do you make the joint itself more stable? Okay. That's something we'll talk about as we go along here. Um, so there are other things in the shoulder that um, besides the humerus and the glenoid fossa of the shoulder blade that interact um, as your arm moves. Okay. And those things are the neck, the collarbone, the shoulder blade, the ribs, and the upper back. Okay. So let's just comment on those a little bit here. Um, uh, so, uh, obviously muscles of the rotator cuff, I'm sure you've seen anatomy pictures of this, but they all attach at some point, you know, to your shoulder blade and to the top of your humerus, uh, four muscles involved here. I'm not going to test you on, on anatomy at all, but you can see the, the four muscles right through here. All right. And then the bones in the shoulder. Okay. So a lot of separate joints that can actually affect, uh, the way the shoulder moves and it can actually cause pain as you're moving your arm. So what I want you to do is take your right hand and I want you to, uh, uh, with fingers, finger pads in your right hand, uh, just grab or touch, palpate the top of your, your, your sternum, your breastbone. Here. You feel this little indentation through here, okay? Um, then I want you to feel, go to the left and you'll feel this little bump. That's the end of your collarbone and here it says your clavicle, okay? And there's a joint right there. It's called your uh, sternoclavicular joint. And sometimes that can become symptomatic when you're moving around. As you raise your arm up and down, that, that shoulder blade or the uh, collarbone has to rotate and has to elevate as you move, okay? Um, and as you move your arm, you can certainly raise it up and down. You can kind of feel for a little bit of motion in that joint. Sometimes there's a little bit of a clicking sensation in that joint too. Then I want you to um, uh, kind of walk your fingers over along the, 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 the clavicle, the, the collarbone, to the other end. You feel a little zigzag as you, as you go across here. And you come to the end here, and there's a little bump there as well. That's the end of the collarbone, the other end. And adjacent to that, what it articulates with is your chromium process. That's the top of your shoulder blade, okay? And that's your AC joint, your chromioclavicular joint. Um, you guys, might, some of you might have had injuries to that, um, falling, landing on it, you know, a skiing injury, a lot of trauma, you know, bang to that joint can, can, uh, can disrupt and tear those ligaments. So... Um, as you uh, follow the end of the acromion, it kind of drops off. And that drop off point is the end of your um, acromion process and is the start of your um, rotator cuff. 
all right? So it pops out more if you lean forward in your chair, put the back of your hand at your low back, and you'll kind of feel that, op that space open up a little bit more. That is your rotator cuff right there. And if you kind of go back and forth along that tendon, sometimes it's pretty tender right there. Um, so uh, people that have rotator cuff issues will be pretty tender in that, in that joint. Okay. Um, or in, in that space and you kind of work your way around there, the front part of your rotator cuff, the side of it, the back side of it. And uh, where it's uh, tender is all dependent upon the person. Um, if you also from your, your, for your clavicle and kind of like the middle of your clavicle, you kind of work your way up. Okay. You kind of work through the, the muscles on the side of your neck and you come up to like a really hard thing that's sticking out of the side of your neck. That's your first rib. Okay, and it is pretty tender in most people, even people that are asymptomatic. Um, the issue with the first rib is that um, this can be a very dysfunctional um, uh, thing that persists in people. People that have seen maybe a couple PTs, a couple doctors, and the pain just doesn't go away. When they come to see us and you get in there and you evaluate this, and you realize that the first rib is elevated and it's stuck. Okay, people that sleep with their arm overhead, um, laying on their side at night, um, uh, sometimes that, uh, that first rib gets stuck in that elevated position. And then there's certain things that we can do mobilization wise, manipulation wise to get that first rib back to where it's supposed to be. Okay. And that can be a very chronic recalcitrant um, reason for why people have pain. Okay. And that's something we can certainly treat here. Um, the other ribs, the other um, uh, joints in your upper back, your upper back um, segments in your spine called your thoracic spine can be very um, much a cause of shoulder pain as well. Um, stiffness there has been shown research-wise to actually, in some circumstances, cause shoulder pain. And manipulation, mobilization of your upper back can help to alleviate shoulder pain as well. Um, and obviously your shoulder blade, when you move your arm up and down, it's got to be able to move up and down as you're, as, you're, um, as you're raising your arm. There's a kind of a ratio of two degrees of arm humerus motion for every one degree of, of uh, shoulder blade motion. I'm not going to test you on that, um, but it's just a, a good to know as far as what we look at when, we, when you raise your arm. There should be a certain pattern of motion that occurs in your, in your shoulder, okay? Uh, okay, that's good. So how did we come to specialize in shoulder pain? That's a good question. Um, of course, uh, of course, but um, I am from Michigan originally, um, corn fed and corn bred. Um, a lot of uh, big schools, uh, AAA high schools, a lot of athletics. Um, I was very involved in sports, played baseball, basketball, tennis, uh, track in, in, in high school. Um, and yeah, had my share of injuries for sure. Um, a lot of things can happen when you're playing, um, a lot of things that happen uh, accidentally when you're on the field, of course. But then as years pass us, you know, 30 years of doing PT, a um, uh, lot of years working out, still playing softball after baseball and and still running and I'm doing all my you know, stuff in the gym, injuries, right? Um, I remember like probably 20 years ago, bench pressing and pushing out, snap in my shoulder. I mean, what was it? What, what snapped? You guys might've had the same issue. You're working out in the gym or throwing a baseball, you know, something snaps. Five years after that, throwing a, 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 a snowball to my dog, just goofing around, throwing it like I was back in high school again and clunk in the shoulder, same thing. Now, was there like a re-tearing of something that I, have a rotator cuff tear or labral tear, or was it just some you know, traumatic, you know, thing in the joint got irritated? Who knows? But after a couple months of rehab and working it, pain goes away, right? Feels better. Um, and some weird thing, five years ago, out of the blue, my shoulder started to hurt and no idea, nothing, no injury, whatever. And so started self-treating it and just wouldn't go away. I had a colleague of mine um, and I get together just to kind of assess it. We both, um, you know, concurred that um, it looked like it was a frozen shoulder. And it's just the weirdest thing in our literature it talks about this, this uh, possibility that a frozen shoulder could um, come from like maybe a virus or something that preceded it, you know, something in your body, the influenza virus, the cold virus. Um, and maybe that's what it was. I don't know. But after, you know, a good month of me stretching it and causing a lot of crocodile tears, you know, trying to push your pain, I mean, it's better. It's been, you know, it's been fine ever since. And that's, of course, what we need to educate our patients on and what's good pain versus not good pain. All right. So, so because of all my history, not only shoulder, but neck and back and foot and hip and geez, I mean, you, you name it, I've, it seems like I've had it. I tell my patients I've become much more empathetic, you know, to their situations that so had a lot of the same stuff is what they've had. All right. Um, so really over the years, it's been my, my quest to figure out the shoulder. 
Okay, it's been through continuing education, through self-study, working with experts in the field. I'm going to seminars as well, um, where you kind of put it all together, right? And then you realize once you get out and start practicing that, you know, shoulder pain is the third most common orthopedic disorder following neck and low back pain. So you better, you better know it pretty well, right? When it comes to, you know, uh, assessing for it, um, trying to figure out what's, what's going on in the shoulders, de uh, dealing with all the multifactorial things that can contribute to shoulder pain. Okay, so what has come from that, of course, is this whole idea of, you know, writing a book on shoulder pain, um, my shoulder pain treatment guide. So you can certainly get that, you know, for free on the website. Um, if you haven't downloaded it already, then certainly go back and check that out. Um, as I mentioned to you um, earlier about foot orthotics, we have a lot of educational stuff on the website. Big web page on orthotics, big web page on shoulder pain, um, how to self-treat shoulder pain. And it links you also to my YouTube um, best three strategies um, uh, channel. And that you can get the best three strategies for shoulder pain, foot pain, low back pain. Um, yeah, uh, just a ton of, of free information there. So a lot of stuff at your disposal, okay? So, so I guess the biggest thing going forward is how do you know if you need physical therapy? Especially now when you're, if you're at home and you're wondering, well, do I need to go and see a physical therapist or can I self-manage? Will this get worse if I don't do something about it? In a lot of cases, it certainly can get worse, okay? Um, one way to determine whether um, PT is appropriate for you is that if your pain is reproducible, meaning that it can be reproduced with certain um, uh, motions, uh, certain uh, postures, certain positions, then it, it is, it's also reducible. So if it's reproducible, right, it should be reducible, okay? That's generally speaking what we call mechanical shoulder pain, just like, you know, mechanical low back pain. It's when you move a certain way that causes pain, but you can do something maybe in the opposite direction that takes the pain away, okay? Mechanical um, shoulder, mechanical low back pain. 90% of the people that we see have this type of mechanical shoulder pain. Of course, 10% of our population might not benefit from PT. And there was 10% of our population that may need some follow through with a doctor, might need a surgical consult, um, something else that we just can't affect a change in. Um, but the biggest way to determine this is our physical therapy movement assessment. And that would determine for sure if you're a good candidate for physical therapy. It's stuff that we do that's kind of, you know, um, specialized to what we do as physical therapists is determined through movement analysis, movement assessment, what's going on with your shoulder. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to um, think about one activity uh, that causes your pain. And I want you to rate it on the scale of zero to 10, 10 being the worst the pain's ever been and zero being nothing and put it in the chat box. Okay. Whether it be, you know, something like you know, reaching overhead, you know, carrying objects, lifting, reaching behind your back, getting dressed, sleeping, whatever. Okay. Just put that in there and just give me a sense of where your pain levels are at. Okay. So a couple in here. Yep. So, you know, like exactly laying on your side at night, you know, eight out of 10 pain, of course, I mean, sometimes the pain will wake you up from sleeping at, right, at night. Um, that's certainly not good for healing in general, not good for a lot of things to not get your six to eight hours of, of, of sleep at night. So these are all things that you want to, you know, bring to your therapist's attention going forward. So thanks for sharing there. <clears throat> okay. So a couple of uh, quick facts here I want to get into. 75% um, of professional baseball pitchers have labral tears and 40% have rotator cuff tears, but most have no pain. Okay. So it begs a question. Um, do you need to have these tears in the shoulder to be able to throw that fast? Okay. Even though you don't have pain, could you eventually develop pain? Certainly the most mobile um, joint in the, in the body. Um, the shoulder joint, produces the fastest known human motion being 7,000 degrees per second. So if you're going 7,000 degrees per second, you need to have stability, strength, and control in that shoulder, right? Okay. And then 60% of people over the age of 60 have rotator cuff tears, yet same thing. Most don't have pain, right? So just because you have a tear doesn't mean necessarily that's what's causing your pain, all right? So then how reliable are x-rays and MRIs at predicting shoulder pain? right? It's tough to say, right? Going forward, there's no definitive when it comes to this, okay? Um, just as another quickie, geeky sort of um, uh, research article here, what they did is they actually compared, um, I looked at 1,000 patients, some that had 
uh, an acromial plasty with uh, decompression um, surgery uh, where they actually clean out the arthritic spurs and the degenerative um, you know, uh, changes that occur that decrease the space in uh, where the rotator cuff goes through. Okay. They compared those patients that got the surgery to patients that had a placebo surgery, right? And also received an exercise program. And what do they find? Okay. They found that they, there were no differences, no additional benefit for those that had surgery versus those that didn't. Okay. So the takeaway from this is that just because you were told by your doctor that you have a tear in your labrum or rotator cuff doesn't necessarily mean that you need surgery. You need to exhaust all your conservative options first going forward, movement assessment, the right exercises. And, we, and, and in a lot of cases, we tell our patients, this could take you three to six months, starting from now, doing the right exercises going forward to maximize the effect. Because you need to rebuild the foundation going forward. And that's what we're here for, is to guide you in that process. Okay? So there are three ways to address pain. Okay, um, let me just give you like a sequence of events here as far as how things typically present when patients kind of share, you know, their history. Okay, they do something like me, you know, you, you know, you throw the ball and you have the clunk in your shoulder, or whatever, um, and you have pain, right? A lot of people will um, just deal with it like me and, uh, well, I can, I can handle this, I can manage it on my own. Okay, in a lot of cases, people ignore the pain, they don't do anything about it. Right, and will that be a good thing or a bad thing? Well, initially, I think we all have our, our, our ways of, well, taking, taking some medicine, icing it, doing some basic exercises and kind of working your way through things and hoping that pain doesn't come back. But then what happens? A week later, you go to reach for that um, uh, toy in the back seat for your kid or for the seatbelt and you get another sharp pain. And then you start to get nervous, right? And then the next step is, well, I'll call my doctor. Typically your primary care doctor would want to see you. Um, get some sense what's going on with your shoulder and give you some sort of action plan. And what they typically do is they'll ask you about medications. Doctors love to give medicines, right? Um, they might increase your Advil. They might maybe give you a steroid pack, possibly. Um, and uh, what are they trying to do? They're trying to alter your pain, right? They're trying to modify your pain, hopefully with the intent of getting it to feel better, but you don't know until you do it, okay? But your doctor offers the medicines and then you might feel better for a while and then maybe things come back again. They get to the orthopedic guy. Orthopedic, orthopedic asks you about medicines once again. What do they offer you? Injection. I give you a cortisone shot, Mr. Smith, um, help, you make, help, help to make this feel better. Um, and in a lot of situations, it can help to alleviate the pain. In some circumstances, it totally uh, relieves the pain and the pain doesn't come back. Uh, so there you have it again, right? feels better for a while, and then later on, maybe three months down the way, things start to happen again. Then maybe possible surgical consult at some point, doctors start to all, you know, alter again with surgery until one day, you might you know, find our webinar, you might find us online, you might talk to your friends that have come to see us and realize that, hey, I'm tired of this. You know, I, want, I, I need a better option. It sounds like these guys might know what they're doing because they do workshops, they have books, they have, do a lot of educational um, stuff to help people um, understand their problem better. And then you realize that when you come, you get the movement assessment, right? You learn how to start to handle your pain and to hopefully modify it, um, get rid of it, and hopefully get rid of it once and for all. So, so essentially, let's recap. It's that idea of you know, ignoring the pain is the first step. Hopefully, it's not going to be your case. That's why you're here today. Doctors want to alter your pain. And then finally, doing something about it, coming to see us, that's how you finally learn how to handle your pain. Okay, any questions about that, let me know. The workshop has these couple, um, uh, you know, uh, has a question in there regarding this, so definitely fill that in as you go along on the workshop. Okay, so, so the six main causes of shoulder pain. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here. All this is in my book for sure. It's certainly a rehashing of some of this stuff, but I'm gonna kind of just give you the, the nuts and bolts and the highlights of, of uh, you know, the six main causes of shoulder pain. Okay, the number one reason is shoulder impingement syndrome or rotator cuff tendonitis, right? This idea of what we talked about, trying to find that spot, right? Where it starts to hurt, right? You poke over here, that's your rotator cuff. And you can see over here how uh, as that rotator cuff goes through, it can get pinched between the humerus, the top of your humerus, 
and the acromion process on the shoulder blade. As you raise your arm, you're taking up less space in that shoulder. There's a certain amount of normal impingement that occurs in the shoulder anyways as you raise your arm up and down, right? It's when things become symptomatic that you've irritated it, maybe a micro tearing of the rotator cuff, a bruising effect to it, a real strong pinch motion, a high velocity motion that irritates it. Now the rotator cuff is red hot. So now what typically before was pain-free and asymptomatic is now symptomatic, right? The rubbing in the shoulder is now causing pain, all right? So let's have you all do a test, right? What I want you to do is take your right hand and do this on both sides, but maybe do your, your asymptomatic side first. But if your asymptomatic side is the right side, take and place your right hand on the opposite shoulder, and then what I want you to do is I want you to raise your elbow straight up, just like this gentleman's doing on the picture here, all right? And then tell me what that feels like. This is Joachim's test. Um, definitely tells us a lot. Um, typically, if this is pain-free, then it's very uh, much a, um, a sensitive test for ruling out the rotator cuff and ruling out impingement syndrome. Okay. If it is, it's an indicator of the possibility, but there's other tests we do to, um, as a cluster of tests to ascertain whether it definitely is, you know, more likely um, impingement syndrome. So just put a yes in the chat box there if this is painful for you. And then try the other side. Get a sense of it. Hand on the opposite shoulder. Raise up your elbow. Any pinching there. Okay. All right. That's Yoakum's test. Okay, a couple people, good, awesome. Um, all right, uh, so what causes this impingement? Of course, trauma can cause impingement for sure. Uh, the issue that people overlook, of course, something you do all day long, posture, right? How you sit, how you position yourself. Um, the more you sit slouched, the more potential there is for things to become impinged, as you're impinged. As you can see, as your shoulders come forward and you come forward this way, you implode in upon yourself. You're actually compressing the front side of your body. You're taking up the space in the front side of your body, uh, causing or, or, or predisposing you to something getting pinched in the front of your shoulder, right? And your neck as well as your upper back, okay? Of course, this guy right here was very predisposed, right? Neck, upper back, knees, hips, everything. I mean, it's all forward. And once the head goes forward this way and rests on your hand there, you're basically hinging on the mid part of your cervical spine, which can certainly cause all kinds of issues in your neck. All right, we'll talk more about that in a second here. Um, painters as well, arm over the head the whole time and looking up at the same time, causing impingement in the neck and the shoulder. All right, so let's try this. Let's do a little test here. All right, so uh, I want you to compare slouching to uh, uh, not slouching, sitting straight. So you can sit at the edge of your chair here, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to, and I'll show you here first, once you bend forward, slouch all the way down, really try to slouch forward, okay? As you slouch forward, I want you to try to raise your arm, okay? Literally, I can't go any further than that right there, right? So I'm slouching, now I feel a pinching in my shoulder. No pain right now, so I'm not, my rotator cuff isn't irritated, but I simply can't go because now the humerus is a butting up against my shoulder blade, right? Versus if I sit nice and straight, bring my shoulders back and open up the front side, and I go to raise, it goes back uninhibited. No limitations whatsoever, all the way back, all right? Um, and that's exactly uh, what you wanna uh, understand is that posture will influence your shoulder, whether it be you're doing chores around the house, you're reaching into a cupboard or getting your, your um, uh, shirt on, whatever uh, the case may be. Um, so yes, so posture for sure. All right, big cause of impingement syndrome. All right, I think that's on your worksheet as well. So number two reason, rotator cuff tears, labral tears, uh, certainly rotator cuff tears, labral tears can cause pain. And some people do need surgery on these things. But like I said before, you wanna exhaust your conservative options going forward, uh, you know, the right type of physical therapy uh, to maximize the therapeutic effect is what we say. All right, to convince yourself that you've done as much as you possibly can. And I tell our patients too, you even I mean you need to be strong for your surgery, right? So if you have to have it at some point down the way, at least you're doing all the right stuff to optimize your strength, optimize your mobility, optimize your ability to sustain loads going forward prior to surgery. So you still get benefit from that. Um, but a lot of cases, 
this is, you know, exercises can maybe uh, cure your pain and uh, try to enhance the healing effect, you know, to a, a torn structure. Um, your labrum is a, a cartilaginous ring in your shoulder blade. It actually makes the fossa of the, of the glenoid cavity that articulates with the head of your humerus deeper. So it helps to hold the head of the humerus better into the, into the shoulder joint in combination with the rotator cuff, right? So that's the main functions of those two things, right? So number three, Three reason is degenerative changes, right? So if you had 100 people in a room, right, uh, and all those 100 people are over the age of 50, what percentage of those people would you say have arthritic degenerative changes in a shoulder? Any guesses, right? Um, anywhere between 80 to 90%, right? Um, but do 80 to 90% of those people have pain? No. A, a, a percentage of them might, it might be intermittent. Some people might have chronic symptoms, but just because you have degenerative changes does not necessarily mean you're gonna have pain. But you see your doctor and the doctor says, hey, well, I did your uh, x-ray, look at Mr. Smith, your shoulder joint, the, the space should be like this, but now it's like this, right? You're predisposed to pain, but just because you have that narrowing doesn't mean it, you're going to definitively have pain, right? Um, and, uh, the third, the, the shoulder joint itself is the third most common large joint to be affected by arthritis. It makes it very susceptible because of all the mobility in the shoulder. And there's your spacing of the x-ray right there. Of course, over time, that space is going to start to narrow, right? It's just something that happens, you know, with life, living your life. Uh, nothing you can do about it. It's wear and, <clears throat> wear and tear osteoarthritis. I'm sure you must have heard it at some point along the line, right? So... Okay, the fourth reason is soft tissue and muscle imbalances. You know, something that's happened over the years, you're compensating for, you don't realize it. Somebody says, hey, um, hey uh, uh, Mary, do you realize that you do this really funky thing when you raise your arm, you kind of shrug your shoulder. Um, you might wanna see somebody, you know, for that. Um, these are things you just don't realize until somebody maybe points it out to you, right? Um, I have a video here of one of my patients who um, demonstrates exactly that, okay? This um, raising of the arm. And we talked about that ratio of, of how many degrees of motion are in your shoulder versus your shoulder blade. You can see it looks like that shoulder blade is just stuck. It just, my head's moving, it's kind of stuck with the shoulder. It just can't disarticulate from uh, the motion that's in your shoulder, okay? And just to compare, this is what it's supposed to look like, all right? As you raise up, everything moves freely. The shoulder blade upwardly rotates, moves up, and then back down again. Everything kind of has that, that nice little um, uh, symmetry of motion going up and down, the two to one ratio. Okay, up and down, and then back to the other shoulder again, right? Just to emphasize this, okay? Just doesn't look good, does it, right? Of course, eat some therapy to resolve that, All right? That's good. So that soft tissue and joint imbalances. Fifth reason is referred pain from your neck, right? Big reason for um, shoulder pain. Something gets pinched in the shoulder uh, or in the neck itself um, and refers symptoms down the chain, All right? There's actually... Um, uh, this guy, of course, as we uh, mentioned earlier, I mean, that head being forward, you know, causing the pinch this way, he's just hinging on that, just waiting for something to happen. Of course, when you're young, like he is, you know, you can get away, you know, with that for a certain amount of time. But then as the years pass us, as the joints used to be like this, now they're like this, you're more um, predisposed, you're more susceptible um, to um, impingement. And then, of course, pinching a nerve, causing pain down the arm. Uh, there's something we call the Cloward sign. A doctor back in the 50s um, uh, coined this. What they found is that sometimes the first manifestation of a neck problem is shoulder blade pain. Pain on the inside of your shoulder blade through here. It might be at the top of your shoulder blade, someplace in the middle. And um, then you, get, you maybe see a massage therapist for this or a chiropractor and <clears throat> might feel better for a little bit, but then it keeps on coming back. And then you realize, wow, it could be my neck that's, that's bringing this pain on. And that's back to the movement assessment Thing again we got to figure out what you know how do we reproduce the pain right if we can re reproduce the pain then we should be able to reduce the pain mechanical shoulder pain right uh, last reason is hypermobility a shoulder that moves way too much and who's susceptible to this obviously tennis players um, we do workshops for our, our tennis clubs as well and we talk about you know this 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 fact maybe when you're younger you had much more mobility as you get older you still have that mobility but guess what you're much weaker. 
You're not as stable as what you used to be. Not as strong as what you were back when you played, you know, um, Division One tennis um, uh, in your late teens or early 20s. Uh, now it's 20 years, 30 years later, right? So, and this happens to our gymnasts, uh, dancers as well, uh, yoga aficionados out there. If you do a little uh, um, uh, contortionist, uh, you know, dancing on the side for Cirque du Soleil, all this stuff, you know, factors into um, hypermobility and uh, possible um, problems resulting from that. Okay. Baseball pitchers, same thing. A lot of motion in that laid back position here uh, before they come to, you know, come forward uh, with the follow through. Um, there's a lot of acceleration that occurs. That's the 7,000 degrees per second motion that occurs with professional baseball pitchers. Uh, so a lot of stuff can happen. A lot of stuff can go wrong if you're not doing the, the right types of interventions to prevent those things from going wrong. Okay. So, so you're ready to get serious here. All right. So let's, um, talk about what successful treatment looks like. Okay. So first off in primary is it's stuff like this, becoming educated, knowing what to do about your shoulder. Um, if you don't know what to do about it, um, then you're, you're already at a disadvantage. You know, uh, of course we fail as, as physical therapists, if we don't teach you, that's what we should, that's what we're doing all day long is teaching you how to self manage your pain. It's not our, our job to keep you in uh, therapy, to keep you coming back for manipulations, you know, you know, twice a week for the next year. Um, our job is to help you to self-manage by educating. Okay. Um, Hands-on therapy, huge thing. I mean, of course, people see massage therapists, chiropractors of this stuff. I mean, PT, of course, in a lot of cases, a lot of PTs are doing less manual therapy. There's a lot more exercise because the evidence says, you know, exercise is the best thing, which it certainly is. But there's a lot of stuff that we can do from a hands-on standpoint to make you feel better, to help break up knots, to increase circulation, to down-regulate, to desensitize the nervous system, to allow that arm to move better so it's not doing that funky thing that we saw in the video earlier, right? Um, and then exercise-wise, it's not like just stretches. Some people kind of do this stretch or they pull that arm all the way over. And what does that do? That's actually an impingement test that we do, obviously, the Yoakum's test as well as some other tests that we do manually. So if you're doing this to stretch the back of your shoulder, you're actually pinching the front of it, okay? We're talking more um, strengthening exercises, okay? Our, our paradigm for, for treating essentially is to be working on, of course, pain management first. We wanna help people with their pain. Work on mobility, try to increase their movement skills, their functionality of the shoulder, reaching up, reaching behind. Um, then working on stability to try to make the shoulder joint stronger and more stable so that head of the humerus stays in the ball and socket joint. And then of course, over time, increasing the load that you impart to the shoulder, right? And that means resistance bands, it means uh, dumbbells. You're trying to increase your load tolerance so that rotator cuff can function properly and, pump and function pain-free, okay? Um, yeah, those are the big hitters right there. And then we happen to have in both of our clinics, a class four laser. We've had some great results with this. We have a partnership with Light Force Lasers. Um, they use lasers in the NBA, the NFL, Major League Baseball, Division I. Um, you know, trainers are using it because we know that laser gets people better faster. I have a whole web page where, um, on my website where we talk about laser. Um, what laser does, it stimulates chemical reactions in the cells to jumpstart healing, decrease pain, and decrease inflammation. Uh, and I've got a lot of uh, testimonials there, some video testimonials for patients that have done really well. And a lot of research that backs laser. I mean, uh, some of you might've had ultrasound in the past. Ultrasound's like deep heat. It's like putting a hot pack on there, except maybe the heat uh, penetrates a little bit deeper. Circulation is great. We love circulation and, and laser can increase circulation as well, but it's a photon energy of the laser that causes these chemical reactions in the mitochondria of your cells, okay? Um, they started using laser back in, I think, 2000 in the equine industry for horse injuries in 2008. It was um, approved for, uh, by the FDA for um, use in humans. Uh, we actually even used it on our dog after an ACL surgery, and he did great with that. Um, so this is certainly something that we can um, add to your program um, going forward as well. So something to look into, but our website has all that info. Okay, so... Okay, so uh, let's recap here and what we've done today, all right? So obviously you have shoulder pain or you're here listening for somebody who does have shoulder pain. You click down our ad, um, you register for this workshop and you heard the information I've had to share. You've shared some info as well with us, you know, whether it be pain, you know, reach behind your, your head, your back, overhead, reach behind the seat, sleeping on it. Um, and so, so there's something that's bothering you. 
Okay, so you have shoulder pain, and I'm guessing that there's that, that you want some help in in helping to manage it, right? Um, you don't want to uh, ignore your pain. You don't want to alter your pain with in, injections and with uh, medications, with surgery. You might have already before you came to this workshop today. You want to finally start handling your pain. You want to start to manage your pain and get rid of your pain once and for all. So here's what I'm recommending. Okay, um, once you go to my website. You can do this while we're you know, doing the webinar here directly afterwards. Um, it's also on your worksheet as well, orthowellpt.com forward slash schedule. Make an appointment with me or one of our other therapists that specializes in shoulder pain and rotator cuff problems because you want somebody who knows what they're doing. There's a lot of therapists out there, a lot of different education. Um, everybody here at Orthowell, we go through a whole internship program, a mentorship program here to train our therapists to specialize in this. And then of course they bring in their own knowledge from working with other experts in the field, as we discussed earlier. Uh, PT is covered by insurance, except for a copay. We take most major um, health plans, that's not a problem. You can, it's up to you, you can, uh, you can schedule an in-person visit. If you're not quite ready for that, we still do telehealth, we're all set up for that. We did that back in March and April, then very quickly transitioned to inpatient, uh, or inpatient, in-person um, visits. So that's really up to you, and it's up to your comfort level going forward, all right? Uh, but in both circumstances, whether it be online or, or in the office, you will be evaluated by one of our specialists um, who um, sees a lot of uh, shoulder pain and rotator cuff um, problems. So as you're doing that, um, I'm just going to give you a little recap of what to expect when you come in to uh, see us. Because some of you might have never had PT before. Maybe you're um, learning about this stuff for the first time. Maybe you haven't really known that this option was out there. Okay, so the first thing your PT is going to do is going to uh, get a detailed history of what's going on with your, your um, uh, shoulder. Even if it's through telehealth, um, there's a lot of clues in your history as to what's going on with your shoulder. And we can really get in there and have a, probably a 90% accurate um, uh, idea of what's going on with your shoulder by the time we're done just talking to you. Just based upon how you present, the answers to our questions, um, we'll get a really good idea just by, by chat. Um, the, the second thing, of course, as we talked about, is to perform a lot of simple tests, whether it be us showing you on telehealth or doing it ourselves in, in person, and that's the movement assessment, okay? We get an idea of whether your neck's involved, whether your upper back, whether your first rib is stuck, right? Whether you're getting referral to your shoulder from your neck, okay? And that we can do, a, we can get a really good idea even on telehealth, you know, doing that. Um, then lastly, your therapist will give you a detailed explanation of the most likely reason why you're having pain and explain what a successful treatment will be to alleviate your pain. Simple as that, right? Um, the next step is really up to you, okay? Whether you wanna continue um, you know, with telehealth options, maybe you've done that with your doctor possibly, you wanna continue with that for in, in a physical therapy um, uh, option as well or coming in to see us. Um, so orthowellpt.com forward slash schedule, enter your information in there. It's very easy to do, first name, last name, you know, email, phone number, um, or you can call us at 978-522-4199. Um, I mentioned to you that there's a bonus uh, if for those of you who have stuck around and several of you have, which is great. Um, the bonus is we're gonna provide you two free deep tissue laser therapy sessions. Um, you can call Michelle, our office manager, um, to schedule that for sure. Um, get a sense of what you know the, the laser feels like. You can also schedule an appointment when you come in to see us. Like I said, if you're committed, you want to do it, then PT and going through your insurance is a way to do it. It should be covered. If you're still not quite sure, we can offer you a complimentary consultation when you come in for the laser as well. So talk to Michelle. We have many options available to you. So, um, so going forward here, there's the uh, web page right there. This is what you're going to see when you go to orthowellpt.com. There's your information you're going to fill out there. And then we have our little Q&A session. So I'm going to bring um, Tasha back on here and see if there's any questions that we have in our, uh, among our participants. Are you there, Tasha? I am. Anything that's come up that you can't answer? So there's a couple different questions about different activities okay. um, about changing posture. So that's kind of something you covered a little bit, but yeah. in terms of an office, is there height of keyboards, height of desktop, anything mm, like yeah. that you can go over? Yeah, sure. Well, that's something that we like to take you through, uh, hold you by the hand and take it to the whole um, demonstration when you come in to see us. We can do this online as well. Um, some of the telehealth visits we're doing in March were just that. Show me your workstation at home. 
Why are you having pain in your neck, right? And then you see very quickly that people are all over the place. Their heads are going forward, you know, this whole idea of, you know, bifocals and they really can't see the screen very well. So they start doing this stuff, right? They don't realize that after 30 seconds of sitting there, they start to slouch, right? And uh, if you don't put something behind your back when you're sitting, you're invariably after 30 seconds going to slouch forward because that's, you're just, we're all lazy, <laughs> you know, point. Uh, yeah, it's just the way, it's the way we are, right? So um, essentially it's, it's straight up and down. Okay, it's you trying to get into position, like a secretarial chair, like the really basic like um, uh, chairs you get from Staples, where it's just the back rest, you have arm rests, you can adjust it up and down. Maybe there's a tilt on the, the chair as well, um, but you wanna be straight up and down. Anytime your shoulders are behind your hips, you're going to be slouching. As much as shoulders go behind, your pelvis rotates backwards and that you know, rotates everything. Pelvis goes back, shoulders come forward. And then what happens to your head? Then your head goes forward, right? So, so I guess the biggest takeaways is, is um, you know, something behind your back um, to support your back. So they always maintain that little bit of inward curve there. And then typically everything else self-corrects going forward. Um, something to support your arms, uh, armrests, you know, something to support your wrists, like a wrist pad, eyes at the top of the screen. So your eyes just scan up and down the, the monitor, right? The screen versus um, like your whole head moving up and down, your head going forward, making sure you can see it, that it's close enough to you as well. So yeah, but when you come to see us, so we have the telehealth visit, we'll show you exactly what the picture we send you or give to you that demonstrates um, exactly what we're talking about. We have um, links to um, things you can attach to your chair with a belt, like a, like a lumbar roll. So if you move, that, that pillow is always attached. And that's stuff we can talk about later on. So anything else? Biggest one has been exercises that you can do for shoulders. Yeah, it's tough to, um, you know, generalize when it comes to, um, okay, well, you have shoulder pain, so I'm going to give you these three exercises, right? On the, on the best three strategies uh, YouTube channel, you can certainly go there. We give you the basics, right? If your arm is sore, you're trying, you, you essentially want to help to desensitize your shoulder. So using pulleys is the, one of the, the examples on the, um, on the best three strategies. You're just trying to get the, the left side, the symptomatic side, you're using the right arm to help raise the left arm, to get it pumping and get it moving. But this is like when things are pretty acute. We're just trying to desensitize or trying to mobilize or trying to kind of feed the joint. And this is high reps, low weight sorts of exercise. We call that medical exercise therapy. Um, and that's the beginning stages. But the postural um, element, the pain management element, not pushing into pain, that's the educational component that you have to abide by. Uh, because if you keep on pushing into pain, it's like a hammer just pounding on that rotator cuff. And it's not gonna heal if you keep on doing that and you keep on re-irritating and re-traumatizing that joint. So any more specifics regarding exercise are just individually you know, um, uh, you know, developed for our patients. There are some generic things. You can hit my website, um, go to the blog, and look up you know, the, the, most, the best evidence-based um, rotator cuff exercises. But whether those are appropriate for you or not, just depends on the, on the patient. But like I said, our blog, if you go to that, the, uh, click on complete list of blog posts, and you'll scroll down to probably 100 different blog posts that we've done you know, over the years. And you can probably find uh, you know, a ton of stuff. You might find other stuff in there that might be relevant uh, to your situation. So that's what I got for exercise. Anything you want to explain um, what goes on when someone comes in for a free screen as opposed to a full visit? Yeah, what yeah. Can we expect? We do, yeah, it's a good, good question. Uh, we tend to, um, well, we have more time when we have a full session scheduled for you. We have more time to spend with you. Uh, the free screens are a bit less time. Uh, we do a lot of the same tests. Um, but like I said, after just talking to you, we're 90% sure of what's going on with your shoulder, whether it be a telehealth, whether it be um, you know, an in-person visit. Um, at the end of the uh, free screen and at the end of our physical therapy evaluation, we will write up a little something for you. We'll kinda, we write things up as we're kind of going through our, our discussion and our, 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 our detailed explanation of what's going on. Um, we'll write down what we think is going on with your shoulder and the, and the, uh, the uh, our idea of a successful intervention, a successful treatment plan, what it would look like for you. Um, so yeah, so if, if, if insurance is something, something you don't have, you have, you have other options, 
uh, from a self-pay, a more affordable self-pay standpoint. Um, it's really up to your comfort level. Some people, they know they want it. You know, they've heard great stuff about us. They are convinced when they have a workshop that, you know what, I got insurance, I'm gonna use it, might as well, it's just a copay, right? Um, I'm gonna get this done, because then we can start treatment right away. The free screen allows us to get a feel of what's going on. We'll write up our wellness plan for you, um, but then we have to do the evaluation, the formal evaluation next time you come in. Then we're kind of delayed for doing treatment, all right? Um, so if you, if you wanna do it and you're committed to it, do the evaluation, then we start treatment that same day, and they get right into some hands-on stuff the next day. It's just kind of a delay doing the free screen. But you still get informed and you still know what's going on with your shoulder by doing one or the other. So, All right, that's all I got for you, Chris. All right, great. And we have a couple just, you know, other questions, uh, typical questions that people ask um, uh, during the webinar. Is physical therapy covered by my insurance? Yeah, we talked about that except for a copay. Do I need a referral from my physician? Depends on the insurance. A PPO does not. Uh, HMO does. But most people, most payers, they want to have something from the doctor. Uh, just like, like I said, Michelle, our office manager can help you with that and, and uh, you know, come to, you know, uh, and figure that stuff out for you. Can shoulder pain happen due to old age? Um, we talked about you're more susceptible, right? But there's no definitive that those arthritic changes are going to cause shoulder pain or back pain or hip pain. It just makes you more susceptible. Um, uh, can you help with arthritis, bursitis, bone spurs? We can't take away a bone spur, of course, right? But is the bone spur actually causing the pain? Some people, yeah. That's that 10% that of people. Maybe you're in that percentage of people that just need to have that taken away and uh, cut out of there to take the pressure because it's pinching into the rotator cuff. There's that possibility. Um, weakness in your shoulder, arm, and hand, you have to be careful. Some people's first manifestation of a problem in the neck is, wow, I'm getting weak in my hand. I'm, I'm like, dropping things. I'm, can I, when I go to pick things up, it just feels weaker. And that's my dominant side too. And why am I weaker my dominant side? You start to pinch a nerve up here like that guy who was doing this at the computer, doing that eight hours a day or less or more um, can certainly cause a, 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 an impingement effect on the nerve that can cause changes in, into your arm. The nerves that start up here control everything else that happens down through the arm. So definitely a very important thing to consider. Um, the best sleeping position for shoulder pain you know, for most people, it's on your back. Um, and that's true for back pain as well. Um, laying on your side, you're compressing and putting pressure into the shoulder and that can limit circulation. Arm overhead is a definite no-no because that totally compresses things. It can cause a first rib problem, the nerve pinch in your neck as well. Um, so yeah, on your back is usually best. Um, and of course, we've already answered this. Do I need surgery for a torn rotor cuff? Absolutely not. You certainly don't. Um, and that's something we'll help you with going forward. So, and that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Um, it's really great to uh, help you out today. Um, we, me and my team are certainly looking forward to helping you guys out one day to get rid of your shoulder pain once and for all. So give us a buzz. Go to orthowellpt.com, enter your information. I'm sorry, orthowellpt.com forward slash schedule, enter your info and um, stay safe, everybody. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Take care. We'll see you.